Until now, we had talked about trigonometric functions for acute angles. But what happens if we have an angle greater than 90 degree or less than 0 degree? How do we define trigonometric functions for angles greater than 90 or less than 0? Let's explore this section now. Consider a circle with radius 1 unit. We call these kind of circles as unit circles. Let the center of the circle be at the coordinate 0, 0. That is, x value is 0 and y value is also 0. Anything to the left of the center has an x value less than 0 or a negative x value. Anything to the right of the center has a positive x value. Similarly, anything below the center has a negative y value and anything above the center has a positive y value. Now imagine a point P on the circle which moves around the circle in an anti-clockwise direction. The xy plane is divided into four quadrants. The angle begins in its standard position in the first quadrant. As the angle continues in the counterclockwise direction, we name each succeeding quadrant. As you can see now, when P is in the first quadrant, the angle is acute, that is, it's greater than 0 but less than 90 degrees. When P moves into the second quadrant, the angle lies between 90 degree and 180 degree. When P moves into the third quadrant, the angle is greater than 180 degree but less than 270 degrees. Finally, when P is in the fourth quadrant, the angle is between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. At a full rotation, the angle will be 360 degrees. After completing the full rotation, the angle will not start from zero but will keep on increasing and this way the angle becomes larger and larger. If OP is moving in the clockwise direction from positive x-axis, we already have discussed such angles are taken as negative angles. We now use these ideas together with our earlier definitions of sine, cos and tangent in order to define these trigonometric ratios for angles of any sides. Angles of Consider the figure on your screen now. Line OP is in the first quadrant. Let's drop a perpendicular line down from P to the x-axis in order to form a right angle triangle. Consider the angle theta. Now the opposite side has the same length as the projection of OP on y-axis. So we define sin theta is equal to projection of OP on y-axis divided by length of OP. Now this value will be equal to projection of OP on y-axis since OP is 1. This is similar to our earlier definition of sin theta, that is opposite side by hypotenuse. We can use this new definition to find sin of any angle. When OP rotates to second, third or fourth quadrants, the same definitions will still apply. So this way, we can define sin of any angle. Remember, in the third and fourth quadrants, the projection on y-axis will be negative. So sine theta will also be negative. Now, in the same triangle, we know that cos theta is nothing but adjacent by hypotenuse. The length of the adjacent side is same as the length of the projection of OP on x-axis. Hence, we take the following definition for cosine. Cos theta is nothing but projection of OP on x-axis by OP. That is, projection of OP on x-axis since the value of OP is 1. So, in terms of our new definition, tan theta can be written as projection of OP on y-axis by projection of OP on x-axis. From the definitions of sine, cosine and tangent, we can also define cosecant, secant and cotangent since these are nothing but reciprocal of the earlier trigonometric ratios sin theta, cos theta and tan theta. So this way, using a circle with the center at origin, we have defined trigonometric ratios for all angles. All these definitions are summarized on your screen now. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.